I've been on crutches for the last seven years. I've been, uh, my leg became short for like uh, two to three years. You mean crutches like you used to walk on those? Yes, on crutches. For on, seven years? Yeah, for seven years. Guys, would you even believe that meeting her? I mean, <laughs> I know. Someone, she never used to walk for seven years and yeah, here for she seven, is. Years. Uh-huh. I was born as a normal. Greetings and welcome to Inspire 7 with Miss Unice and I am excited for you guys to be part of this show with me and today we are going to start our first episode ever for Inspire 7 and guess who our guest is? Hi guys, have you been able to guess who our guest today is? Okay, I'm sure you will never be able to guess who it is but drum rolls, give it up for the one and only... Miss you nice in the building. <laughs> yes, she's our guest today for the first episode of Inspiration 7 with Miss you nice. I'm very humbled to be her host mm-hmm. in her very own home. I, I know. know. It's such a pleasure. Thanks for having me here. Thank you very and much thanks for, for coming. <laughs> You're the guest here, so thanks for coming. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, without further ado, yes. I want to give you a little sneak peek oh, about God. what you're going to talk about. It's good. It's it's something. Um, I don't know how. It's something huge about her life that she's going to share with us. Um, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I I don't want to get emotional right now, but I, I I'm sure at some point it will yeah. be. But I hope that you yeah, watch with our makeup exactly. and, uh, and blabber everything out. Mm-hmm. But guys, um, Eunice is going to talk about her most painful experience yeah. the worst experience she's ever been through and mm. it was painful and all that she's going to tell us mm. and guys her story is one of, full of hope miracles do you believe in miracles because i do believe i, in I used to believe in miracles but i believed more in miracles <laughs> after hearing her story which i've had just a little bit of it yeah. now she's going to tell us everything mm. from how it happened and how she got in the situation that you know like was painful and all that so mm. guys without further ado let's get to the story so hi girl. Oh, yeah oh my god you're so hi. beautiful today <laughs> thank you you're thank you very much on, you're boring. i like your neck piece <laughs> Thank the you. makeup, your oh. earrings, it looks so beautiful. Oh my god, thank you very much. Okay, so I have um, one question for you. Uh, are you ready to tell us this story? Um, wow. You know, actually please. I have two, two questions. So the first one, are you ready? Wow. I've never been ready to tell my story tell of resilience. Mm-hmm. I get it. I've never been ready. But, uh, you know, for the last couple of years, I've always wanted to start a show. Mm. I've always wanted to inspire people and yeah. to, tell, to to make people believe that there is God who exists. And, and there, there is, is a second yes, chance. And there is a second chance in life and that God can give you a second chance in this life. Yeah. So I've never been ready to tell the story. It's okay, we all start from somewhere. Yes, <laughs> but today I feel I feel um, like comfortable you. to tell to talk about it because That's it a happened. Good move. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like it's all in the past. Uh, yes, it happened, but yeah. you know, sometimes it can be so emotional because every time I tell someone about that we story, will deal with I, I I just go all out and I become so emotional. Mm-hmm. But today I hope and I pray that it will be good enough, be and good. I hope guys you'll be able to get inspired, to get motivated, and to believe in. God, that there is God who can give you a second chance in life, despite what you are going through. Yes, so so the second question is oh God. Mm-hmm. please tell us the story of your most painful and the worst experience in life. Wow. So I think I will just start uh, from where it is started. From Like, tell me what story are you going to talk about and then now like, you can oh, yeah. to start. So um, hmm. I've been on crutches for the last seven years. I've been, uh, my leg became short for like uh, two to three years. You mean crutches like you used to walk on those? Yes, on crutches. For on, seven years? Yeah, for seven years. Guys, would you even believe that meeting her? I mean, <laughs> I know. Someone, <laughs> she never used to walk for seven years and yeah, here she seven, is. Years. Uh-huh. I was born as a normal kid. I didn't have a disability. So it didn't come from childhood? No, 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 no. no. Okay. It just okay, came when I was an old person. Like, I was all grown up. Like, you are used to a normal life, and yes, then yes. it happens like, then oh, it you just have to transition happened. from yes. being normal yeah, to, to being, being disabled. disabled. Yeah. Yes. And it was 
really painful yeah. and you know all this happened because of doctors misdiagnosis oh, so yeah really. i know many uh many people out there they have been uh, misdiagnosed yeah. by doctors and that's why i always tell people when you are sick please try two or three doctors yeah, before, try, you yeah, undergo, and that yes, before you undergo that operation or yeah. before you do something because yeah i am a victim of misdiagnosis so guys i i feel like we feel <laughs> like we're taking you rounds and rounds so we're going you've already heard that she was in crutches for seven good years she didn't walk for seven years and she was born a normal child and you know like it just happened that from like from today you're not going to work anymore you know so I want to tell you how, what happened that day, the day that you got that accident or what, what you got that left you in, yeah. cr- in crashes. Uh, so I remember it was um, during post-election violence, that, oh, that was 07. 2007, yeah. it was on a Thursday, yeah. uh, I think it was on 21st or 22nd wow. and it was dur- during December. Mm. So we went to... Uh, to our shags. That time I was in Nairobi, so we mm-hmm. traveled to shags because of the post-election violence, yeah. and we traveled there. So when yeah, we got there, crazy, I remember. used to be a normal kid. I used to be very active. If you ask my mom, she will tell you like, you nice. She was that. You know, the jumpy yes. kid. Yes, the one is just up and down. Yes. Yeah. And you know, our place is hilly, so I used to, to go all out. Wow. If it is fetching water, if it is taking cow to, you know, uh, to feed and yeah. everything. I used to be that kid. Oh, wow. So I, I go to Shags and then I got there and my mom is like, uh, That time we didn't have a water tank. Mm. So I, my mom, I'm like, oh, yeah, why not? Why would I not go to, to the river and yeah, fetch some water? I just, so I just uh, took my jerry can. It's like, I mean, help if it is. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. So I take my jerry can. Mm. Uh, after taking my jerry can, I, I, I go down the hill because the place is so hilly. So I go down the hill and when I, before I go to the river, there is a place. I remember that place vividly because, mm-hmm. yeah. So before I go to the river, there is that place there whereby there is like a little bit like a hilly. Yeah. So I just slide it. You know, the way you can just slide. And, just, you know, like just slide it. Yeah, you just slide. Uh-huh. Just that. So I felt a little bit of pain at that moment. Where? Where? Yeah, on my knee. Ah. Yes. I felt some pain and then after that I was like, ah, this is just normal pain. Yeah, I, I think yeah. every kid when you fall down or yeah. just any normal person when you fall yeah. down, I think mm. the, the first thing to get hurt is the knee. Right? Yeah, so like, yeah. That, that's normal. You yeah. want to hurt the knee. Yes. Uh-huh. So I'm like, ah, it's just normal pain. So yeah. I, I just went ahead. I felt water. Then you can lima tena. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, after fetching the water I just went like back. Like you slided, yes. you were hurt and then like you climbed the knee the hill again and yes, I did home. that. I did that. Yes. You are okay? I am I was okay, very okay. Oh, okay. So after I got home after relaxing, I, I started telling my mom, you know what? I feel some pain on my knee. And she's like, ah, you only pain tools, you know. Mm-hmm. So she's shadow. like, ah, let me take Kaluma. You know, I I applied on the knee and then I was okay. Yeah. So that yeah just come came to an end. So oh, this, it was December. Yeah, it was December. So like, yeah. yeah. So we are now at January thirty mm-hmm. zero eight, mm-hmm. and that time I started just feeling some pain. You know, just the the normal pain you would feel on your on knee. your leg. Yes. Yes. Okay. The pain was on my knee, mm-hmm. and then so that that year, the whole of that year, I, I was just taking you know normal medicine, mm-hmm. painkillers. You know, the pain was not extreme. It was like extreme. you would feel the pain and just take painkillers. Yeah, and, and go was, on. Yeah, and go on, move on regardless. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I continued that year, it came to an end. That was zero eight. Zero nine, it's yeah, I'm like uh the same same pain took on my knee. And then that time And then, zero eight you zero nine you were in class eight. Um yeah, zero nine. Let's not tell them where I was. <laughs> <laughs> they'll guess your yeah, age. Yeah, they they'll guess my age. No no I don't no, want that. that. <laughs> So zero nine is mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I start feeling some pain, and I'm like, "Hey, my mom, my day, she, she, she started saying it is becoming serious, and now the leg started like uh, swelling. Yeah, it just started swelling. Uh-huh. So my mom was like, "Oh my God!" So we need to take this serious and take her to hospital. Mm-hmm. So that is zero nine. Wow. Zero nine, Imesha. All the way from twenty zero zero, zero seven. Yes. Zero 
seven yeah. in December. Mm-hmm. And this is zero nine, right? yes, the yes. end of zero nine. Yes, yes. So for two years, you've been like experiencing pain yeah. and just taking painkillers and that's it. Yeah, but it was not extreme pain. I wouldn't say it was extreme pain. So like from z- up to zero nine, yes. you were just taking painkillers and that's it. Yeah, but it's not like every day. It was no, just like, like just once in a while. Once in a while and then I'm done. Right? When the pain pops yeah. up, mm-hmm. you take and a painkiller and it was not and extreme it. pain. I wouldn't say that was pain actually. Oh, okay. So now we are in 2010. 2010, I'm supposed to go to Form 1. Oh, wow. Yes. I'm supposed to train, uh, you know, uh, not high university, school. high school. Yeah. yeah. And this is this uh, that that po- at that point now the pain started becoming so extreme. Eh? Oh. I started feeling a lot of pain. The legs started swelling. Like there is a part that I will show you guys mm-hmm. whereby it, it is swollen up to now. It has never gone back to normal because oh. I don't know what happened that time. Yeah. So at that point, now it's 2010, I want to join Lemma Girls. Anyone from Lemma Girls? <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, I used to love that it school. It was her dream school. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I used to love that school. Oh mm-hmm. my God, I wanted to join there. Okay. But now at that point, that's when my life changed. My mm. life started changing uh, like... Wow, yes. <laughs> Let it roll out. Yes, like that's when my life started changing all of a sudden. Have you ever seen you are all okay? Then, the yeah, next and then like the next just, minute, you just yeah. like it's a different it's, world. Yeah, you're, you're in, in a that. different position. You're in your everything is just different in yes. your life. Wow, so it is 2010. My mom started like, uh, you know, we need to take her to hospital because she is in pain. She's mm-hmm. in deep pain. We need to make sure she is okay and everything. So I go to, we start, I will not mention all the hospitals that I have been because I have been uh, to many, to many, many hospitals, hospitals and I wouldn't want to damage their reputation yeah. because of what I went through. No, I won't do that. But I will mention some of the hospitals because I'm, fo- I'm comfortable mentioning them because they helped me. So we started with Machakos District Hospital. Mm-hmm. We went there, the doctors did the x-rays and everything. Then they are like, there is a growth on your leg. Wow. You get, yes. A growth? Yes. Out of nowhere. Out Just of from nowhere. that falling like yes, two years of, ago yes, yes 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 and then now you have a growth yeah i have a growth on my leg and then they're like yeah and was is... this near the knee yeah okay and you because you know the moment the the, the leg started swelling it started swelling in a way that it is sharp eh? oh yes so that maybe that might that might be the reason is why they said it is a it's growth a yes okay so they like uh, we want to do an operation on the knee Wow. Yes. And remember, you know, at form one, you're yeah. a teenager, exactly. very hopeful for life. <laughs> yes. Like you're excited to join high school, you know, mm. study, go out there. Yeah. I mean, you're these ambitious, you know, girl. a girl with a lot of any so much yeah. planned for the future and mm-hmm. all that. And then you're being told that an operation. An I mean, operation. It's so scary. And you for money. It was so scary. It was a new life that I didn't really yeah. know. But my mom was like, no, we cannot really allow you nice to do an operation on her leg. Mm-hmm. So she decided, no, we are not going to do this. So we seeked another option. So mm-hmm. we went to another hospital. So this is where my, my problem started. When we transferred from a Chakos hospital to another hospital, it is when my problem now started popping in and out. Like, wow. yeah, this is where now misdiagnosis happened. So we went to this hospital mm-hmm. and they are like, uh, you know, I haven't joined from one yet. Yeah, I am supposed to join. You're supposed to join, yeah? supposed yeah. to join yeah. but you know, yeah. like, the I leg have to problem, deal with the leg first you have to, before yeah, I you join know, from one. Health comes first. Yes. So we go to this hospital. Mm-hmm. Wow, after we got there, they did x-rays, uh, they said we cannot really see anything, there is no growth, we cannot see anything wow. on your leg, but we don't know what they said, this is a problem with teenagers. Wow, guys, I wow, <laughs> teenagers, what, yeah. how, how is that, you know, connected to being a teenager? Uh, I think at that point mm. I didn't really I, I was not able to tell if I fell or not because now the pain was extreme so I didn't mm. know if it is from that time that from I that just, sliding or then, just from something yeah, else, yeah from something else okay. so they were like we cannot see any problem we cannot see the leg is just okay but we will give you something else that will make the leg to be straight because at that point it started like bedding eh? wow yeah because 
the pain was extreme like so like so the extreme. pain made it bend yeah it just started like bending because of the the, 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 the swollen part mm. and then you know i was limping so you were limping yeah i was limping okay. so i they they gave me something that i i used to put uh to put on my leg so that it can be straight like this okay. and then at that point they gave me um crutches armpit crutches eh? yes remember i am joining for one you're joining for one mm-hmm you're just you know like limping yes and you're being given crutches yes armpit crutches to oh, work wow. with it is new life that i had yeah, never really i mean you and then you know in your head you're like am i going to high school with these? yes with crutches you know how will people yeah. see me yeah, exactly you know? like yeah, yeah. It was really it, painful. It must have been too much for you to it, take in. It was. It was very painful. And you thought, like, maybe you, you know, this lame child, yes. this lame friend. Did you lose friends? <sighs> we are coming there. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it has been such a, a an experience. So at that point, mm-hmm. I I was given those crutches. Mm-hmm. I was given crutches two weeks before joining high school. Wow. Yes. And your dream was still Lema Girls? It was Lema Girls okay. until that point. When so I now was, you had to change. I when you had, were given the crutches, you had to... It's not me who changed. Yeah, like the crutches made her yeah. switch from Lema Girls yes, to, to a school. more comfortable school, school that yeah. will, you know, like handle a condition with the yeah. crutches. Yeah. So at that point, my dad is like, you know what, you know, we cannot take you to Lema Girls because of your situation mm-hmm. and we don't know, we don't want to take you to a school that will be... You will be a liability to them yeah. we need a school that is you are comfortable in there are people like you you know you will be taken care of mm-hmm. and i'm like okay okay then if you want to take me to another school it's it's, okay. it's fine but i accepted shingo yeah. because my my dream was to go to lema girl seriously mm-hmm. i used to love that school mm-hmm. and i had passed my kcse to yeah, take me KCB. to lema yeah yeah oh yeah. kcp to take me to lema girls but i didn't go there yeah. so at that point i'm like uh, yeah we have to go to another school that is for the physically disabled it is here in Thika that is called a joy town for the physically disabled and we prepared ourselves for those two weeks like who who told you about joy town or my like, dad knew this oh the, 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 he knew the school yeah he knew the school so and my mom easy. and everyone oh. yeah so i go to um now we have prepared ourselves to for me to join high school eh? and i am on crutches i have that thing that used to make my legs straight straight like mm-hmm. from morning up to evening when i am going to my bed my leg used to like be you straight were supposed yes. to put it straight yes it the was, whole time yes, the, the whole entire time. day yes the entire day so that it they can try and make it straight was it hard to deal with you know like oh my with God. Day? it was hard because that thing ilikoi oh. nanifinya yeah Wow, it's pressing you and yeah, it's you know pressing me and it it's supposed to make you like the legs yes, straight. straight all day long. Wow. Yeah. I start now my high school life. Eh? Mm-hmm. You know that time I don't have I used to have just broken because uh, you know I was told after I get to 18 years because I'm still a teenager the problem will disappear. Oh. Yes. Wow, what a lie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. After I get to 18 years, I will be okay. okay. I, I don't know if I should call it a lie or <laughs> they were trying to give her some little hope, you know, like to try and accept the situation. Yes. I don't even know what to call it. Yeah. So now at that point, I, I start like going there. I start schooling. Form 1, Form 2, I get to 18 years. So like Form 1, Form 2, you're still on crutches and I, you still yeah. have the straightening leg thing. Yeah, Form 1, I was on that straightening thing. Then I, when I got to Form 2, I was like, no, this thing is just damaging my leg. It is just not helping me. So oh. I threw it away without telling the doctors. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> because it was just too much for me. It was making my leg so painful. And, you know, it, it was, was bringing in yeah. more pain, yeah, more pain than, than helping. Yeah, than help. it wasn't okay. really helping. So I threw it away mm-hmm. and I threw the crutches away after four months and how did you use to walk yeah i took another crutches like um elbow crutches oh just one. not the ampit yeah, one, the, one. Ampit. The, the small one yeah the, oh, the small yeah. one so i that took was that was a bit manageable yeah it was manageable so i started practicing mm-hmm. walking with them and everything so because you know i would see people who are like me and i'm like ah yeah, yeah i am doing okay, it i am know? doing it yeah. it's okay why not then so i continue walking with that crutch mm-hmm. and then i threw that key thing away yeah, at form two, I am 18 years old. So you're like, I should be healed. I, I, should I am be healed. 18, I'm so 18, like, you throw the things, you know, I am healed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, like you, you've believed the 18 years. Oh my God. I, a lot. 
I cannot you like looking you. forward I to I was 18. looking forward to get to 18 years for me to walk again like you thought being 18 was your medicine like that yes. was your healing yes, it was Just my healing 18. process yeah so like you must have really looked forward to your birthday oh my god <laughs> don't even mention yeah because I was really looking forward to it and I wanted to get there I wanted to make sure yeah. I start working again you know no. at 18 you and then 18, you I wanted start to working. get to 18 years and transfer from oh, Joy Town you to, to Le <laughs> oh my god, her dream still lives yes. on. Wow. Yeah. Because I was told by doctors, definitely you will believe your doctor when they tell you that you, you will get well by 18 years, you'll be walking and you'll be bubbly again. Dear Lord, did it happen? No. Everything became extra. We'll be back again with the second part of this story. Welcome back to the second part of this story. So, she's 18 it's her birthday she's 18 years old she can't walk and she's like uh i thought i was supposed to start walking from today because i've just turned 18 so let's get it from there what happened wow so from 18 it is when my life became all messy it is when i became like um it is when everything started becoming weird mm -hmm. it is started becoming so painful mm -hmm. it is be started becoming like i started even neglecting myself i i didn't accept myself because you know even when i was like you were hopeful yeah. that you would be healed yeah and then like it doesn't happen so yeah like, it didn't happen like, yeah like all your hopes were shattered yeah everything and was you shattered. are not hopeful again you I, just, like, I was not hopeful. i think this is my life yeah, yeah i'm yeah. disabled yeah. you know like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. so i never accepted myself even when i was in form and I you were still accepted. in denial yeah i was in denial because i was like i was born when normal. I, normal child i have been a normal child for yes. over 15 years i have been climbing the hills and everything trees yes. and everything else yeah like i am the person especially who eating mangoes exactly and the tree avocados and all that kind of a, a kid who used to go to the trees to to get the avocados you are the boy girl in yes. the family imagine oh, then okay. over here i am here and i cannot you walk can do again yeah. and I, at, at the fact that i am 18 years old it just made me you know it was just so painful. Now, at that point, you couldn't walk at all without the crutches. No, no, no. I you had to use them. You, you had to use them. Yeah, I had to use the crutches. Okay. And, you know, I was still in school. So the pain was extreme. It was mm. just, uh, I, I cannot really But tell you, did you used to visit the hospital? And you're like, yeah. At that point, I yeah, remember going to hospital. But still, they would say, okay, if you get 18, you'll be normal, you'll be okay. Then I went to hospital and I'm like, by the way, I am 18 years old. And you told me once I get to 18 years, I will be okay. What happened? What happened? I am yes. 18. I know. Yeah. You know I, I can imagine the innocent you yeah. going with that line of, I am 18. Yes. I mean, yes. am, I, am I not supposed to yeah. be yeah. okay mm -hmm. now that I am 18? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they said, we will give you another year, like, we will give you the 18 years so that we can see if it will come back to normal. Not yeah. knowing that that will be the start of all my problems, of me not working again, of me using crutches, like of now. me undergoing all the pain in this world. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> now it was the start of the pain now. yeah it was You're the start in of high pain. school yeah i am still in high school okay. so at that point because i was limping a lot mm -hmm. my back started having a problem i started mm -hmm. now having a problem with my back it used to be painful so you can imagine i am painting You're on my limping. my i'm limping and, you and now my now your back is my aching. lower back is aching oh. at that point but the back part i could cast an elisha too oh. but now it can but at that point i remember going to the nurses you know our school used to have a nurse so i would go there i will get you know i will sleep there I, I will miss classes i will miss lectures i will miss you know all these things and it just got so emotional for me it used to get so painful i used to hate myself i started hating myself i never accepted myself i was like uh you know god i cannot really continue with this pain and i remember my mom gave me a verse from the book of isaiah 54 verse um verse 17 it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and that is the 
word that has kept me up to this point in my life that i would say that verse has kept me from that time mm -hmm. so because she gave me that verse i lived with that verse and every time i would feel pain i would tell the devil you know what there is no weapon formed against my leg shall prosper and i know that one day i will wake up and i will walk and i will transfer from this school to Nema girls like oh, my wow. hope was yeah. still there so like any you just wanted to be healed and go to Lemagas. Yeah, I wanted to get ill and I go to Lemagas. I can imagine that can dream, you know, like that, yeah. that dream you hold on yeah. to and you're like, yeah. I'm going to fulfill this no matter when or you know how. Yeah. yeah. So uh that's it's now form three. I am not healed. I am not there. Yeah. Not there still. The pain is extreme. Uh, because I remember when I, when I was going to the lectures, I would carry a pillow so that I can put on my oh, back. back. Yeah, because it was painful for me to sit. It was painful. The leg was just so pain. The mm. pain was a lot. So I got to form three. I think it was second term. I go to another hospital. So I transfer from that hospital that I used to go to. I go to another hospital. And now this hospital, I started taking medicines. In a day, I it would... Gives, it gave you, you know, the, the yeah. advice that you take medicine. Yeah, I take medicine. So, that's so the they prescribed pain. some for you. Yes, okay. and they were expensive drugs, I oh, would wow. say. They were very expensive. <laughs> so I go to that hospital and I start taking medicines. I would take 15 tablets in a day. 15? Yes, 15 in a day. You know, every time I have a headache, I cringe at the fact that I'm going to take... Yeah. A single... Mm. One panadol, you know, like one painkiller. Yeah. But remember, I want to get... tablets in a day. That's, yeah. Yeah, but then, like, you, you want to be healed and go to the magazine. Exactly. Like, I had well, to, so to take those medicines. Yes, I had yeah. to try and make sure I am taking those medicines. And then there's this thing that we, we trust doctors too much. I like, okay. you know, when you go to the hospital and you're sick, mm -hmm. and the doctor tells you, go and sleep for, the, for 48 hours. Yeah. You will force yourself to sleep because exactly. you believe that doctor. Yeah, you, you don't believe know that. completely. So I used to take those medicines. I took the, those medicines from form one, mm -hmm. from form three. That is second term to form four. Wow! Every day, sometimes to the, like the end of form four or like during form four. To the end of form four. And I remember asking myself, now I will be living on drugs only. Yeah. Like were the drugs relieving the pain or? They were relieving the pain, but to some just extent. for a while. For a while, and then Zikisha it comes back. to EV, I would not be able to do anything. So you had to stay on drugs yes, the whole time. Throughout, I was staying on drugs throughout the whole year, the whole yeah, the whole semester. The whole time you have to yes, stay on drugs. Yes, I had to. Zikisha to EV, my dad had to send someone to the school to come and bring me some medicines. Actually, I would really thank. Some the person who used to come to our shout school, out, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> who used to come to our school to to bring me those medicine. He is called Fanuel. He used to come and you know he would bring me those like medicines. every time. Yes, every, yeah, he comes, he comes, he comes around to bring me the medicines. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, so thank you very thanks. much, Fanuel. Forever, you bless you. <laughs> yeah, bless you, man. So that is from four. You are done with form four. I'm, I'm so like, with form four. Lemma girl story. Lemma girl. It's also over. It, it is over. Like, like that's it's it. just over. And I was like, I remember when I was doing my KCSC, the pain was extreme. How did and you handle it? I remember telling God. God like you know, do, yeah. during KCSC, mm -hmm. even if you're in pain, yeah. you have to go and do the exam. Uh, yeah, you have like to. You have yeah, to. You have to. No matter how painful you, 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 you no matter what kind yeah. of pain you're experiencing you have to. or what you're feeling, mm -hmm. you just have to be there. You have to do. And I remember telling God, like I used to be a believer. I used to be a Christian. I really, I think I that used helped to. you. Yes, it did. So I, I remember telling God, God, I know I have been... She's still a believer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember telling God, you know, it's okay. I have not been... I have been on and off in studies. Mm. I was not reading, you know, all those things. But at least when I was not in pain, I would wake up and try and yeah. read. But I remember telling God, God, I know that I have not been reading. Can you just help me pass in a way that I can get to the college or even in a university? Yeah, even you, I'm going to you've do seen my situation. Yes, you see my, certif my, my situation. situation and you know that I really wanted to let my girls but I didn't make it there mm. and you know this is where I have found myself. Please God, can you just help me and get a grade that will take me to, to college. To college. You know. And I remember I did my, my KCSC just well with heart pain and I you know, at that point I had not really accepted myself as a person. Like for the four years? Yeah. 
you are just there like you know just yeah. studying yeah. waiting to be healed yeah I, you I are like never, no, i am not disabled no, 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 i'm just, never, just <laughs> using these crutches yes, for a while for a you know? while it's for a season yes that is what was in your yeah. mind yeah. yes like it's just for a season and then i'll be done with this i will be done with this like oh, wow. i was so hopeful in a way that mm. I knew mimi ni tachemea tena. You will go back but to I the didn't, yeah, I didn't know crazy how, child but you I are. knew that I will walk again. I will uh, the pain will just go away and I will be okay. But shetani ni nani? The devil is a liar. <laughs> 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 wow. I continue now. I am done with like you done with form for you you are at home now. Yes. I'm still in Nairobi. Yeah, that is in Nairobi. So mm-hmm. I come back to Nairobi uh and then uh it was almost Christmas. I remember it was day, day 27. So my dad decided I go to another hospital. Actually, my my pastor at church like like after high school, yeah. you went home with crutches yes. and you still continued using yeah, the crutches. Yeah, I still continued using okay. the crutches. So I remember going to church and you know my my pastor saw me because when i used to go home i never really wanted to interact with people so i never used to go out to church i never like you were like afraid of how people yeah, would take yeah, you yeah you know yeah i was walking then all mm-hmm. of a sudden i am walking on crutches like and then the stigmatization you know i would walk around and i i remember people calling me kagu yani ile ile unajua yeah yeah you're walking in, in another posture and everything yeah. so it just used to to hit me up it used to get into me a lot so i hated even going to shags i never used to go to shags since one wow yeah i just hated going there because i uh, you know people would talk people would say a lot of things and you know it used to get into me I and when really, people decide to talk yeah. about someone else's life yeah, yeah they, they go into it. yeah they go into it yeah. so i decided no i'm not going to church so i remember that time my dad told me you know what you know you need to accept yourself you need to just accept yourself that about the, that you are yeah, disabled yeah you are that you are disabled but no yeah. for me i was like in no. your heart in yeah. your head you're like mm-hmm. i'm not no how am i going to accept myself i am a person with disability and i have been, been in a well good condition. Well, i've been a normal child like how am i going to accept so uh that time i went to church uh and i remember the preacher was preaching about embeneza mm. And he saw me and he called my dad up and he asked him what's happening with you nice and everything. so my dad explained everything to him and he's like we need now to be serious and take her to another hospital so that now she can start you know getting medication okay. so at that point I know I don't know really what happened but um I just sat down and I told myself you know what you nice Uh, you have schooled in a school that is for the physically disabled you have seen everything so it is now time for you to accept yourself like after from after four years of yeah. battling with the decision to accept that mm-hmm. you're disabled yeah now it's like everything now comes back to you and you're yeah. like you've seen it all after yeah. four years so yeah. now I think I am part of that. Yeah, I am part of it. So I accepted myself as a person with disability. Mm-hmm. I accepted that I will never walk again. I accepted that I will walk with crutches for the rest of my life. I accepted that I will be in pain for the next I don't know how many years. So now that brings me to my question. Okay, so now it's after four four, you've already accepted. Yeah. You're still in pain, you're still in crutches, you're mm-hmm. still taking the medication. Yes. I know your dad says they take you to another yeah, hospital. Yeah, to so. another hospital. Mm-hmm. So this is what this was the part of my healing now. Oh, I go wow. to at Saint, least some good news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I go to St. Mary's here in Nairobi. Oh, it's a good So hospital. I got to St. Mary's and they sent me to St. Mary's Nakuru mm-hmm. because they said uh, once I go there those guys are specialized in uh, the bones the bones yes so i go to st mary's nakuru and um they 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 sent me again to nairobi nairobi is it women nairobi women or nairobi or something like that they sent me there to do an mri for mm. the whole body the whole like it's a scan for the, yeah, whole, for the body. whole body so i go there they do the scan and then i take the results back to st mary's nakuru no, yes okay the, we go there they see that i have a problem so <sighs> now like you you in, in akuru and uh, they are preparing you for an operation yeah now they are preparing me for an operation mm-hmm. uh and you know it was during christmas at that point oh. yeah it was christmas like we waited for christmas ikaisha 
then I, I had now to go and get admitted at St. Mary's Nakuru. Okay. So it was the 27th. 27th of December. Yeah, 27th of December. I go there, I get admitted, and I'm like, the only word that was coming in my mouth was Ebenezer because, you know, our pastor had preached about Ebenezer. So when I was going to the day that you went to church. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I remember when I was going to the theater, I went with the word Ebenezer. There was no other word that was coming out of my mouth. And I remember when I went there, before I got in, I told God, God, if I don't come back alive, please accept me. I know I might have sinned again as you, mm-hmm. but like at this you point, made yes, your last prayer. yeah, I made my last prayer and I told God, you know, even if today I just rest, the pain has been so much for me. I've been mm-hmm. handling it, but it's just like too much. Even if I die right now, it is, it is, it, it is, is just okay, cool. Beneza. Just take it, yeah. And I went to the theater, and so like, um. I know you don't want to tell us what the problem is, but did you have a broken bone or something? No. You didn't have a broken bone? No. Okay. Yeah. Carry on, carry on. Yeah, so I go I go inside to the theater, they they inject me mm-hmm. and I sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I sleep and then the, the next moment I woke up, I woke up um, in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. I was on bandage. You know, like on your leg. Yeah, or? on my leg. They okay. did um, an operation on my hip joint. Okay. Yeah, because they say that's where the problem is. So it's not even on the it's knee. It's not on the it's knee. On the it hip. is on the hip. All that along, I've been treating like the whole different time, things yeah. the whole time. So I go now. I go inside. They do the operation. I get back, and I remember going to the ward. And when I got to the word, I would hear what people are saying on the background, but I couldn't yeah. really talk because I the think pain it was, was a result a... of the anesthesia yes. and then the pain. Yeah, and then the pain. Yeah. So that time I was with my sister, my elder sister. Mm-hmm. So we go to the th- to the ward. Mm-hmm. They they take me back to the theater. No, not mm-hmm. theater. The ward. ward. Mm-hmm. Yes. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Breathe in and out. Yes. <laughs> so it is now date 28, 29, 30. Then there is this, th- it is now date 30. Mm-hmm. My sisters, they just plan to come and visit me in the hospital. Like now the other sisters, she yeah. has a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. So the three of them. So like now you have one in the hospital, yeah. the other three. Yeah. They decide to they come, decide and to come to the hospital okay. because it was not a major operation. So yeah. my sisters were like, ah, mama, mama, we will take care of her. Just relax yeah, at home. Let relax us go and, and take yeah, care of her. We'll take care of her. Mm-hmm. So we go to hospital, like uh, we go to the ward and uh, we are just there and my sister just decides they will come so that they can celebrate the new year with me. Yeah. Yeah, we cross the year with me. Together, yeah, even together. though it's in the hospital. Yes, but at least, but at least we'll be together. Mm-hmm. Not knowing that that will be the beginning of everything. That will be the beginning of all the pain. That will be the beginning of... Uh, would I say depression or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it was the beginning of a lot of pain in my life that I, I even if someone is my enemy, I wouldn't I wish someone to go that, through yes. that because it was a lot. So I mm-hmm. am on my bed at, mm-hmm. in the hospital mm-hmm. and then I heard my sister saying, calling someone, calling pastor. I remember he, he called him Pastor Peter and she said, Pastor Peter, do you know Kina Masiwa mepata accident? <laughs> like it just came from the theater. Yes. You know, you're like hopeful. My sister Zango, they'll come and I'll tell them, like, you know, the operation was successful. Yeah. We will celebrate mm-hmm. New Year's Eve and New Year with them. Yeah. And then, like, you hear the call yeah. that they were involved in an accident. Yes. On their way. On their way you. to coming and to visit me. That's hard. Like, that, that's a lot. <laughs> it was a lot for in, one person to take in. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but I am just there and I, I, when I heard that, I shouted in the word and I'm like, Faye, ati kina masi wamefanya nini? I even got the energy to talk. Wamefanya nini? Wako haji. Now I started breaking down because I heard her saying, kina masi wamepata accident and I knew they were coming to see me. Yeah. So I am in hospital, I am on cathet- catheters, catheters, yeah. something, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you cannot walk and everything after the operation. So you just like I am on the bad bed. Ages, yes. You're bedridden the whole time. Yeah. You are bedridden the whole you time. Can't do, you can do and then you know the guilt of they were coming to see me. Yeah, they were coming to see me. Now they have been involved in a road accident. Five minutes to get to getting to the hospital that I Five was minutes to yes. Five minutes to Oh the devil is such head a big liar. Liar. Yes. They mm. were involved in a head on collision. <sighs> Oh dear Lord, help me! <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm fighting so hard for me not to shed any tears because this shows just how much you've grown out of it and moved on from it. I know, and um, it's okay. Take your time. You okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, no crying, by the way, that's what I promised myself since yesterday when I said I will give you guys this story. Uh, so. Uh, I need one too. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. So uh, they coming to see me, and they have been involved in a head-on collision. Three of my sisters were there. They were in a Nissan for fourteen seater, but someone had a light in Naivasha before Nakuru. So they are there. They they were coming to see me and they are they have been involved in a road accident at that point i do not know whether they have survived or not you're just there wait, i'm just waiting, there for waiting for the news and no one is giving me the news because seriously i am bedridden how am i going to accept your sister doesn't news? even yes. see it fish to tell you yeah anything. yeah She's like, no, because I my sister literally she fainted at that point she fainted when she had the news yes. she fainted she oh fainted because she's like Eunice is here. She's hospitalized. Now my sisters the are coming. Three. The three of them are coming. Seriously, the five of us, we are in the hospital. So they were brought to the same hospital. <laughs> oh my God, yes. And I remember, I don't know when your energy is talking about, but I remember uh, I, I was hospitalized in a, in a bed that was close to a window. So I remember seeing my elder sister, my elder sister uh, on a bed. And then she looked as if she was not alive. Oh God, you know. So, whew. like on a bed being brought in. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You got it. Let me give you a hug. I know. I know. It's okay. This. Think of it as a triumph. I mean, you overcame it, all of you. So think of it as a funny story that happened to you in the past. You know? Wow. <sighs> yes. Anyway, it's well. It is well. It's well with my soul. Oh my God, I'm with Aisha. Anyway. So. Uh, I saw my sister being brought in and I'm like, wow, is she alive or what is happening? So now I started beating myself. I started now remembering all the pain that I have been through, all the pain that I have had to endure, all the medicines that I have been able to take and I'm like God why are you why are you being so why are you being like this like so why yeah you're just so I questioning him. yeah I started questioning him and asking him why God why would you allow me go through all this pain and now my sisters are here and mm-hmm. I hear they were the three of them dear Lord that was the most painful experience in my life you know, I am supposed to join college because I have passed it. Oh, you, oh wow. I did. I passed. I mm-hmm. passed. At least I got a grade that would take me to college. Yeah. So I. And that is what you were praying. For. I was praying for that. Mm-hmm. So now I got. You know, my sisters have been brought to the hospital, and the other guys who were in the same car, like 
uh, nine people died on the spot. Okay, I know this car. Yeah, had fourteen people. Yeah. One alighted. Yeah. At Nakuru. Yeah. Naivasha. No, Naivasha before Nakuru. Mm-hmm. They remained thirteen. Yeah. Three of the guys are her sisters. The other ten, nine of them died. I mean, so there are only four survivors. Yeah. Actually, not not like not nine who died on the spot. The the, the survivors were three of my sisters, one couple, and another lady. They were five. The survivors were five. Uh-huh. So other the other guys, even the driver, they all perished at the spot. Oh. So the five of them, they were brought in the hospital. The six, uh, the five, five, the five of five. them, they were brought in the hospital. So the moment they came to hospital, one didn't really make it. I, I I don't know if it was a he or she. She died before you know before everything. So they only remained. Yeah, they four. remained for. Mm-hmm. Well, and, well like, I mean I I think like you know God was on your side because your sisters they, they were survived. survived. Yeah, you know they were like among the four numbers. You know they are just three. You know and I remember like I was just breaking down. I was crying in the ward. I was just over there yeah, and telling God I could just save their life. You know just save their life for me because mm-hmm. I cannot really take it if they have to go mm-hmm. and they and I have to remain. You know? And if, remember they've if been we have to go, yes, if we have to go, let's mm-hmm. go the, all of us. Like mm-hmm. don't leave anyone. Just allow us to go, the four of us without leaving anyone because the pain was too much. Mm. So I remember at that point it was now around twelve AM. My 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 parents were called, you know, and they rushed. They came Walikujaraka from Achakos, my yeah. uncles, they came to the hospital. Mm. So all the plants they were just ruined. Ruined by that. And I I felt like I was the the reason is to why you are never the reason everything happened at that point you are never the reason don't even think i remember feeling like i am the cause of all this pain i remember like asking god god any all the pain that i have been going through why would you allow like my sisters to just get on this accident and to just be brought here whereby I am also hospitalized mm-hmm. and I am um, I am not able to walk. So now for them they will not be able to walk. They will be on crutches, maybe they will be on wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. And I remember beating myself for so long. I remember I used to ask God a lot of questions. I started hating myself at that point. I started feeling like, no, this is not the kind of life I want to be. Why can't I just, you know, like, what is life for if I have to go through all this? Wow. And at that point, I... (laughs) Wow. I'm trying so much not to shed any tears. You even lowered your voice. (laughs) Wow. I... I was asking God a lot of questions. Mm. I was really damaged from inside. And, you know, I got hospitalized for a whole week in the hospital so because the pain was too much mm-hmm. so every time i would shout the doctors would come and they would inject me with a sleeping pill so mm-hmm. i used to, to sleep from the time they were brought in from the accident until i think uh four to three days it is when they stopped like injecting me the sleeping mm-hmm. pills and everything because i was okay. shouting okay. I wanted to see them, I wanted to see my sisters, I wanted to make sure like they are okay, mm-hmm. I wanted to just see them, but it didn't happen, mm-hmm. so I am over there, so I remember the doctors just came around, they removed the catheter, they gave me a walker, I, I tried walking, I could not walk, so mm-hmm. they gave me a wheelchair, I, see, I sat on the wheelchair, then I went to see my sisters. <sighs> it was a relief. To see all of them, you know, like alive. Yeah, and I remember getting to the ward, 
and seeing my elder sister. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So I I got the word and I see my elder sister. I remember looking at her she could not even like eat. She was she was she was being given food with a syringe if it is porridge everything. I remember seeing her and I asked God <laughs> like why would you allow my sister to go through all this pain because of me? It's like we're all, you know, all yeah. going through it, you know. Like, mm -hmm. it's like a family thing now to be yeah. in pain, you know. To be in pain, like, they are hospitalized. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> they are there, I... You know, four family members hospitalized in the same ward because I refused to go back to my ward. So the doctors need to bring another friend mm, on the same so ward. We yeah, together. so we stayed together, the four of us. Mm. So the only person who was working was my elder sister. And when I looked at my sister, I was like, this happened because of me. And that's why, that's the reason as to why, guys, I will be talking about um, how I was able to accept everything, how I was able to conquer that. I'll be talking about that in the next episode that we'll be having on this channel. So stay tuned. And I remember asking God, why me? But do you know someone someone told me that God doesn't put you through something that you cannot handle. If he puts you through a situation, it's because he knows you're strong enough to handle it. That was hard. And you know I believe in that thing more than anything. So every time I go through a thing, I'm like, ah, God, you put me through this. Of course you know I'm strong. Wow. So I guess he put you through that because he saw just how strong you are. You might never see how strong you are, but <laughs> the strength in you strong. the strength in you it was a lot. <laughs> I tried to be That's strong. why God pulled you through it. Demand. So now, yeah. to you. You're from the hospital? Yeah. You are at home? Yeah. How is it? Are you still working on crutches? Yeah, I was still Are you still crutches. living? For how long? Um, so I, I got to... I, I worked with that crutch for quite some time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think it was a year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Or two... Two... Uh, uh, two towards two yeah, yeah yeah so at that point i am supposed to join the university and you didn't you couldn't join at i that couldn't point. join at that point so it was almost 18 to september so it is when now my dad was like oh you need to join the college now mm -hmm. and you know what i wanted to pursue uh, journalism and i was like yeah i need to pursue journalism to be the voice of the voiceless in the society i love that <laughs> Because I felt like uh, people with disability go through a lot. There is a lot of stigmatization, discrimination, and mm. I needed to be the voice, voice for them, so that I can be able to air issues that they go through. I can be able to tell their positive stories. Because every time I would go to the internet, I would just see, you know, negative stories about persons with disability. So I really needed to change that narrative using my lenses to tell these stories of persons with disability that mm -hmm. they are not a liability. They yeah. are just the same people. Like they, they are, are no more normal people, human beings. No more human beings. Just and able differently. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, I used, I used to say disability is a club anyone can join. And so That's true. Uh, that is like, so true. Yeah, I really wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. And yeah, for God, for sure God do make dreams come true because mm -hmm. I joined, not really, like I joined college, I went through all the lectures, mm -hmm. I graduated, then after graduation, no, before the graduation, I, tell, I told myself, you know mm -hmm. what, I will leave this scratch in the house and then I will try to work so that I can be able to see if I, I will be working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it was just like a, I, I want a, a to walk try. of faith. Yeah, I want to try mm -hmm. to see if I will walk. Mm -hmm. And I left the crutch in the house, mm -hmm. and I went to the college. The college was not far from where I used to stay, mm -hmm. so I walked uh, for a few minutes, and I'm like, um, hey, 
by the way, it's, it's painful, but I will walk. And I tried, I went to college, nikafanya the lecture, then in the evening I say, let me call someone, uh, the motorbike guy, to just come and drop me home. Mm. It was just a few minutes to my place. Mm. So I got the guy, and he came and dropped me to the house, and then the next day I'm like, ah, I can walk again, and I started walking, that's how I started walking again. That is how, like, you got rid of the crutches? Yes. But now mm. at this point. But then, like, your leg, yeah, did it have issues? Yeah, it, it had issues. After mm. the operation, the leg became short. Oh. It, it just, like, uh, it just became short. Shorter than this yeah, one? Yeah, shorter than the, the right leg. By far or kidogo? Uh, it was two to three inches. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and now, like, when you left the crutches, how did you walk? Because now the leg was short. How yeah, the manage? leg was short. So like you I used, used to, to like, limp. you know, like I you used limp all the way. Yeah, I used to limp, but I was taken to another hospital. Mm -hmm. That is in Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. They did their thingy and they gave me a wrist shoe. I started wearing wrist oh, shoes. Oh, one wrist shoe. Yeah, one wrist shoe. Okay. So that I stop you like limping. I can balance yeah. myself. So I started working with the, the wrist shoes mm -hmm. for like a year and two, 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 uh, one to two, two, two years. Wow. So every time I I was living on physiotherapy sessions, mm -hmm. so I will go for physiotherapy sessions. Mm -hmm. I get done with the physiotherapy sessions. Mm -hmm. After that, I go, you know, you know, I used to do lots of exercises back then, mm -hmm. so that the leg can stretch itself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. guess what? For me, I believe I am a miracle baby. You are. <laughs> no, you are. I am. Like, how did like when did did it you know like come back? Like when did it straighten itself? Yeah. Let me tell because you. Right now, you. I know. <laughs> if it was short, I know it's like this. I know. How did it happen? Let me tell you. It is God who knows how it became. It is like, stretched itself. I cannot tell. If you just woke up and it was, you know that story of I woke up and I was in Dubai. <laughs> like you woke up and your legs okay. Yes, my leg was okay all of a sudden. Like I woke up, you know, because of the physiotherapy sessions, the doctors were trying to like stretch it, mm. to pull it. No. Like you just woke up and it was okay. Not, not really per se. Uh -huh. The physiotherapy sessions helped me. Mm. I was able to. My leg started stretching itself. Like, no, a little bit. Uh, slowly yeah, by slowly. slowly by slowly, slowly okay. by slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 from uh, that three inches, three inches to, to two inches to one inch to uh, half an inch. You get uh, like it was a pro. Is there like a specific? Do you remember the day or you know like what you were doing or you just woke up in the morning and it was just okay? How did you know, like, Ikosawa Sasa? Or it's because you wore the shoes and it was a little bit, this, you know, it had a little bit of No, I would go to hospital and every time I go to hospital, They'll they measure. would always measure. Oh, okay. So most of the time you would find I go this week, next week, the other week, they are measuring still. So I wouldn't really able to keep all everything in my in my notebook so mm -hmm. i never wrote anything that at mm -hmm. it, it is from now three inch to two inches mm -hmm. to one inch to half an inch but i remember when i started like walking walking again it was on august wow. yes. like guys for seven years she couldn't walk and then in between those seven years she goes through all that including her sisters all of her sisters excluding one being admitted in the same hospital she is in and then she walks again isn't that a miracle isn't is that a, a story of hope isn't that you know like a second chance that god gave her you know she was this bubbly child when she was young and then something happens she doesn't walk for seven years so like god restored yeah, her he walking did. Yeah. You know, like he restored everything, and you know, like he, he kind of made it better because she started working and she actually became a journalist. I mean, yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Second chances, I your story it inspires any, it makes me believe in better cause, mm -hmm. it really does. And you're very strong to have gone through all that, and you know, came out <laughs> yeah. this lovely smiling you know happy yeah you know the first time you told me about it i was like ah she's joking you know the little jokes. seven years i mean would you even believe that she 
I mean, just look at her work. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us for the first episode of Inspiration 7 with Miss You Nice. It's been a great story to hear and it's amazing that she has decided to open up to us. I mean, this is how important you are to yeah. our guys. <laughs> she doesn't, you know, she's never opened up about I this story to anyone else, but she's decided to do it with you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. Mm. Please keep on subscribing. No, let's do this today. A minute of silence. Uh, 10 seconds of silence for those who have been subscribed. Subscribe. <laughs> we are waiting for you to subscribe, actually. <laughs> Good. Thank you for subscribing. You for subscribing. Now, <laughs> hit that post notification bell. Mm. Like this video. Comment down below. Tell us if you've had you know like a bad experience if you would also want us to interview you yeah. we would be glad to hear your story mm -hmm. and you know air it out for people to know mm -hmm. that people out there yeah. people out here go through things mm -hmm. and uh, they are able to, to come you know yeah it's all about triumphing it's all about conquering and it's all about you know the miracles and having yeah. second chances and also believing that you can get out of any hole yeah. that you're in yeah there is light at the end of the tunnel the tunnel is never uh, dark always yeah. at the end of it there's always there is, light there is light and you know um, every the stars will always align in your favor no matter the yes. day the time or mm -hmm. it will always do that because thank you um, so much i'm so <laughs> uh i'll talk until i know tomorrow you know you tell us yes. something before we wind up this yeah. video so guys it's not like i am sharing my story to be sympathized for people to sympathize with me no i am sharing this story to give you to give someone who is going through a lot hope and to motivate and also to inspire you whoever is watching me tonight or this yeah, this morning or this afternoon if you are watching this video it's not like i am sharing so that you can sympathize with me it is a story that i have kept for so long it is a story that i never wanted to open up to anyone i never used i never really wanted to talk about it because you know it is part of my life and you know accepting everything it it was really hard and that's why i'll be talking about accepting yourself as a person with disability you know dealing with all the challenges is a person with a disability and today the fact that i am walking again i know most of the time when i tell someone my story he or she is like let me tell you i was not prayed for by someone but my mom is a prayerful person she always prayed uh, for me and she always gave me hope and my family and everyone and my pastor back in church they always you know prayed for me and uh, you know, I, I also prayed for myself, but I would say it is God especially, who... Especially the praying for yourself and yeah. you yourself believing that you can get it. And me accepting myself. No prayer will work without faith. Yeah, you and have you to have, have to faith. really try to accept yourself because the acceptance comes first. The moment I accepted myself, it's when I started having peace of my mind. So I, I, I went through all that. I, I was misdiagnosed. I went, I was operated, my leg became short, I was discouraged in college for pursuing journalism while on crutches, and these things do happen, guys. So if it okay. happened to me, it can also happen to someone else, and I am not praying to, for it to happen to yeah. someone else, but it happened to me. But I was able to triumph, I was able to conquer all that, and... In the next episode, I will tell you more about myself. I will tell you how I was able to conquer and everything that I have been through and everything. You know, I will tell you a lot of things how to how to accept yourself, how to make sure that you don't discriminate yourself also because the moment you start discriminating yourself, it is when even other people would not even you know recognize you because me i remember when i was in college i never used to interact with people mm -hmm. because i used to sympathize with myself i'm like oh, no, no one will accept me you used me. to pity yourself yeah i used to pity myself so much mm -hmm. so guys at the end of the day i i am walking again i am whole i am wow uh you will see me walk like i walk just yeah. normal i am okay um i don't feel pain she can wear heels i can wear heels <laughs> I mean. yes i can wear heels and i am happy that god gave me another chance in life yeah. and that's why i have always vowed that i will live 
to trust him in God and I will live to serve God forever and ever. Last thing guys, disability is not only physical but yeah. also mental. Exactly. We, we are going to talk about so much yeah, in, in Inspire in, 7. Yeah. Inspire 7. In Inspire 7, we're going to talk about so, so much. much yeah. Because people here, they conquer a lot of things. People yeah. have gone through a lot of things, mm. be it depression, yeah. be it anxieties, be mm -hmm. it dealing with abusive and hateful parents, mm -hmm. be it, you know, like being, um, you know, termed as the, the black sheep of the family, yeah, exactly. be it relationships and heartbreaks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, people and go through a lot. I know many people would ask me, you nice, you didn't go through depression that time, but I believe that is a story for, story another, for another day. day. <laughs> I will be able to tell you all those stories that you, you are asking. But if you have a question, please uh, comment down below. I'll be able to answer you. And if you have a story of resilience that you want people to know, that you want to air out, please uh, comment down below. Also, you can send me an email using this email, and I'll be able to get in touch with you and i will be able to you know to give you a platform to air your issues out because as i said i want to be a voice to the voiceless i want to give people a platform to air their issues out and for a platform for, pe for people to talk because i have come to realize that people don't really talk and they go through a lot but people are not talking so uh i know you have been motivated i know you have been inspired and comment down below let me know uh, about what you think about my story and remember that god always gives us another chance a second chance and there is god in heaven and uh, i believe in miracles so i'll see you in my next episode